Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Timeless Season 2, Episode 5, it's called The Kennedy Curse. So, full spoilers for the episode as always. So, talk about shaking up the formula, this was completely different than normal. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciated it. Yeah, it was a nice, a nice change because instead of being in the past, because we, we get the set up normally, you know, we have young Kennedy, you know, at school in 1934, he's at university and he's... You know, he's been called to the, the Gaines Counselor's office or to everyone. English teacher, maybe. English I think said. teacher, I think it was, yeah. And then he also tries to kill him. He's written house. Flynn just like storms in, shoots him, and it's like, okay, right, so we're, we're setting this up. And the show so often has showed us the thing at the start, and then it'll jump back jump to. Back in time, like a day before. Yeah, to our team going back to try and stop said thing. Instead, the time ship just showed up. And I was like, no, no, we brought Kennedy with us. Flynn's still in the past. We have to make sure he's okay. We, this is the only. This was the only safe route to like make sure he was safe. So we actually got an episode set in present day with a young Kennedy, as in JFK, running around on his own, and the team try to find him because he's he's showing up at uh, stores, he's going to parties, he's meeting people at hospitals and everything. It's a whole thing. Uh, so that was the gist of it. And then, of course, the, the more sort of interesting character stuff uh, was the, 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 the love triangle. Rare I say that, but <laughs> um, Wyatt, Lucy and Jessica. Uh, and it's funny because I think I went from being worried about where they were going with it to enjoying some of the fun of it, then being worried again, and then being pleasantly surprised with how they handled it. Yeah, I had the exact same journey. Because, you know, the first part where she comes up for... She's, like, still kind of ill from being stabbed and, you know, sailing much trails, and she's like, oh, I'm pain, I'm going to get some tea. And she comes to the, the, the... I'll call it the kitchen. It's more of a communal... Living space. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh... And just like, oh hey, listen, you're the historian, right? Uh, I'll, I'll meet you something. And she's like, oh, try. Is she actually is trying to get away? She's like, oh no, it's, back it's, away. Yeah, it's really awkward. <laughs> Hundred and eighty degrees. There you go. Yeah. But she gets caught, so they have to sit and make small talk, and it's kind of awkward. And I'm like, okay, I'm not like I'm worried about how this episode's going to be if this is going to be a big part of it. And then it gets to the scene where they've got Kennedy, and Kennedy's escaped through the air ducts, and they come back in. Uh, just like, oh, I, 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 I should go. I mean, more eyes the better, right? And the wife's like, yeah, sure, yeah, why not? Why don't you come? And then she's like, I can go too. Like you say, more eyes the better. And I'm like, all right, now, now the girls are measuring dicks. This is actually starting to get funny. Like this, this is actually Lu- Lucy trying to prove that she, she's more useful is actually kind of entertaining. Um, and so, so I was having fun with that. Uh, going forward, and just the little things like when they get to the the to the store. And they're like, okay, so this is our story. I, he's my brother, and you know, you're his whatever. And Jessica's like, why is this going to be so complicated? He's in the in the army. Just make him talk. Yeah. yeah just and say, then it doesn't work at all. He tries it. He's yeah. like, I'm with the U.S. military. He's like, and the dude's just like, so. And it's funny actually because Jessica's like, because uh, she's like, oh, because you know, Lucy's like, we usually try and keep a low profile, which usually makes sense because they're in the past. But she's like, why? And she's like, cause. And I thought. Oh, maybe this will make them look bad because they're so not used to having to do this in present day that they should just kind of be a bit more honest about what they're doing. Yeah. But it completely fails. They ha- they have to basically convince because the guy thinks they're like kidnappers looking for JFK. Well, he doesn't know it's JFK, but they're you know, looking for this young yeah, guy. Yeah. Um, but they, they convince him that he's delusional and they need to get him back to the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, all all all, all very amusing. Uh, so no, and obviously there's a lot of fish out of water stuff with JFK. Like this isn't a phone or looking at cab. I actually I loved when he walked out of the store, and he was it was like it was like it was like a horror movie where he was noticing all the technology and he was seeing like the ATM and the card reader and the camera and yeah. the, the the flat screen TV. I mean, hell, just TV. I mean, 1934. Is it? I mean, yeah. I think the TV was technically invented by then, but not exactly a household uh, item yeah, as of yet. Uh, he, he may have been familiar with it as a concept. Who, <laughs> yeah, but you know, he was quite rich anyway. So. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, came from a rich family, sure. So um, I'm saying, you know, if if anyone had one, it would be that, that those sorts of people. Still flat screen. Which, by the way, I laughed at the end of the episode. Lucy was watching a movie, and they had like a new TV on top of an old TV. <laughs> Yeah, like the old TV was the base for the new TV to sit on. That that I, thought I think funny. it was a. Uh, it happened one night she was watching, right? It may have been. I, you know, I never noticed. It's been awesome since I watched it happen one night. I do love that movie it, though. No, a very good movie. I mean, it was you know the 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 hitchhiking scene, right? Yes, that sounds right. Yeah, that sounds right. I never recognised the actors. 
Yeah. Well, you didn't really get a properly good look at no. them. They're just kind of in the background. Um, but yeah. So, so that's all fun. But so it's funny. They they went a different direction with the Kennedy stuff as well than I thought they were going to. Mm. Because I thought, okay, they'll do this, and I was actually thinking, oh, I bet they wish they had Legends uh, mind wiping stick. Uh, do you know what? It took me a minute to remember that they didn't have that yeah. on this. I'm like, because, yeah, just just flash him. That'd be helpful. Because he's befriending this girl who's kind of like, you know, you, you look like you need help. And she kind of like, oh, we'll take you to the hospital. And then, like, oh, yeah, we'll take you to this party. And her friends are like, yeah, this guy's a bit weird and delusional. Like, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. And she actually looks up a photo of him. Which, you know, if he's claiming to be young JFK, and maybe, you know, I, I feel like, I mean, I didn't know what young JFK, I know what, you know, JFK yeah, you, as president you looks presidential like. presidential JFK. Yeah. yeah. And she gets up a photograph and she shows this is look like you. And I'm like, she's on his Wikipedia page. This could go badly. <laughs> yeah, and you know what's at the top of his Wikipedia yeah. page, right? And then she goes, oh, he's like my brother on there too? And she's like, yeah. And she goes to his page and he starts reading his Wiki page. And I'm like, this is bad. This is bad. <laughs> Don't let someone see their future from a Wiki page. And he starts yeah. reading it. Like, and she's like, oh, it's the Kennedy curse because they all die young. I shouldn't probably be saying this, should I? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> he's just reading, oh, brother was just shot in World War II. World War Two, Two. <laughs> It was kind of funny, but it was also kind of like, yeah, you shouldn't be reading all this. It's like, it's like, what, what is wrong with you, woman? You know, <laughs> like, look, even if you, you maybe don't even believe this, but just in case. Well, that's what I like about it. On their think, Wikipedia page. I think like halfway through, she kind of starts to realise, wait a minute, he shouldn't be seeing all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this is bad. Um, and then, of course, he, like, you know, he reads about himself and he's like, Oh, and he's like drinking booze later, you know, when the team shows up and, you know, uh, what's her face? Emma's trying to kill him. Uh, and that's all going, you know, badly. And they eventually get him back. And I actually, I kind of like the idea that JFK always knew he was going to die. And they, yeah. they kind of do something a little bit different because, you know, uh, Rufus tries to kind of subvert it. And we'll talk about that because that's got its own yeah. implications. But before they got to that point, I thought, there's something noble about him knowing he's going to be assassinated, but he still goes through with everything anyway, because he knows that it's important. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's, like, you know where he asks, oh, was I a, a good president? Mm. And, and it's the idea that, you know, okay, for him, even though he, it gets him killed, it, he was a good enough president that it was worth it. Yeah, he's probably the most well-known president that hasn't been the last couple. And by that, I mean... So people who are alive now, sure, they know the, the current one, the last couple, because they've been in their lifetime. But in terms of historical presence, I feel like JFK is the one that most people know more than anyone. Yeah, from the 20th century, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, sure, like, yeah, you can name Washington, you can name a bunch of, you know, Lincoln, uh, sure. Yeah, I'm but, Lincoln. Okay, yeah. Lincoln's the, okay, I'll give you Lincoln. Lincoln's maybe the one that fights him on it, but... yeah. Um, Again, both presidents who did some very notable things for the better, which is why they're remembered very fondly. Exactly. There's a reason. Uh, also, both got assassinated, which is a bad trend. Um, also makes them more memorable, though, doesn't it? Let's be honest. It, it does. It does. Um, but it would be nice for someone to do something good and then not be assassinated, is what I'm saying. Maybe one day. It'd be nice. Uh, but anyway, so... So let's get to the Rufus and Gia stuff because you know Rufus kind of sits out. It's mostly a trio thing with the. In fact, no, we'll yeah. talk about that first because we're talking about the main plot. Uh, and because we mentioned the whole love triangle yes. thing, and obviously Emma, when she's at the hospital, she attacks, tries to attack them because you know JFK is already gone, and she ends up getting Lucy at her throat. Lucy's trying to help, but she's only got one arm, and she's not much of a fighter anyway as well. Uh, so we end up in this standoff, and she says, "Oh, do you not care about her anymore? Not your wife's back." And of course, I'm like, oh no, Jessica's going to read into that. <laughs> she's going to yeah. put two and two together. And sure enough, she she sort of brings it up and she's going to leave, uh, you know, why it's away stealing a car or something. He's he's, he's doing his thing. Yeah. And I kind of like how that all happens off camera and he just kind of, he just drives into frame. Yeah, we don't scene. need to see that. Yeah. Uh, but it even make it as a little joke where Jessica's like, huh? It's like, yeah, we'll be doing this a while now. <laughs> he knows yeah. what he's doing. Uh but I actually kind of like this scene because I, I didn't like the start of it because I thought, oh no, Jessica's going to leave, it's going to be awkward and then why it's going to feel awkward around Lucy because it's kind of lost him his wife and it's going to be this whole thing. And instead, I actually like that, for two reasons, Lucy as a character is, like, I mean, she was likeable before, but this like gets her so many points as a person because she actively fights 
for this marriage despite her own feelings. She she sort of like, you know, does the, the selfless thing. It says, no, hey, he tried to telegram me back to the future two style. He or yeah, two style. Yeah. Just try to remember which one it was. Let like you know which one it was. Well, one, I have seen the first one, so I know it wasn't in that. <laughs> and two, they say Back to the Future 2 style in this. Ah, right, so shut up. That's the only reason why you knew. You haven't seen two or three. Who cares? Everyone I mean, do, who has taste. Yeah, I'll watch it eventually. Everyone has a childhood and a soul. So, but she says that, oh, you got co martial because he tried to change the past, he tried to do all these things. Um, and it didn't work because all he did was care about you. It doesn't really matter where things went. He thought you were dead, right? Give him a chance. And so I think it does a lot for her character, but it also, I feel like it makes the actual relationship not feel as like, because I, I think as a viewer, we care more about Lucy, right? By far. Obviously, yeah. But I think this kind of hands it over and says it's okay that Wyatt and her will be, you know, together. It is, it's not, we don't have to feel bad about it. Because yeah. Lucy's been the better person here. Still only going to last you know, a few episodes, I'm sure. Very possibly. I, I, I'd almost be willing to give them credit if it didn't. Uh, but this was a kind of a neat way to end it right now without it feeling bad. Yeah. And it did, it did something really nice for one of the characters. So I got, I got to give them points on that. Now, admittedly, I'm still half expecting Jessica to be written house in two episodes' time, which, you know, we'll put a damper on all this. But Lucy still gets the points, so it doesn't go to complete waste. No, of course. Yeah. Anyway, and then the moment later on with Wyatt, where he's like, you know, I've got no regrets. You know, he didn't say anything else. He's like, just, I've got no regrets, by the way. Like, I don't feel bad about what happened, even though things have to change now. And it was like, oh, okay, it's kind of sweet. And, you know, Flint, and I, I kind of knew someone was listening in. I was like, oh, maybe it's Jessica's over, overhearing this, and it'll be, but it'll be okay. It'll be like, oh, okay, he's been nice to her, but, it's, you know, he's just been very respectful. But it was Flynn, I thought, oh, what's Flynn going to do with this? And it was actually just this kind of sweet moment where he comes out and just sits and watches the movie with her. He cares. He does. He's, he's not a bad dude, is he? Yeah, which by the way, I was laughing when they, they brought him back because obviously they left him stranded in 34 and he's like, next time I'm not the one being left behind. And yes, I took three, care of all three of the sleeper agents. Thank you very much. And <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 that did crack yeah. me up. I, I almost, like, we don't have enough episodes for it, but I almost wish if we had more episodes that we got like the side, like the, the companion episode where it's Flynn surviving on his own in 1934 with no yeah, help. Yeah, yeah. That, that would have been fun. Um, it just him constantly muttering under his breath, those assholes leaving me here. <laughs> uh, yeah. But hey, so, no, I gotta give them props for all that. So, that, I was surprised with how they handled the, the, the love triangle. So, points there. I was surprised with the Kennedy stuff and I was legitimately laughing as he literally just read his wiki page. Uh, yeah. Because that's kind of funny. Um, other plot points we need to talk about. Uh, one of which is very interesting is the Rufus Gia stuff. But they're just kind of back at base looking for where Kennedy may have gone. They're like, oh, there's cameras, let's look at Instagram, all that stuff. But the more instant, in- interesting debate that comes up from this, though, is Rufus is really worried and Gia says, hey, don't worry too much. The fact that we even know who he is still is a good sign. And Mason kind of like sort of saunters in mid-conversation and says, oh, I see what she's saying. She's saying that because we still know who he is, time's not changed yet, which means we must send him back eventually. We must, uh, this must all work out. And then Rufus says, well, yeah, until he gets hit by a car and then everything changes instantly and we just won't know things have changed. He's like, that's true too. <laughs> yeah, and, and we get a hint of that as well, like the coin changes. Yes, you know, yes. It starts morphing a little bit when, when Emma gets close to, to shooting him in the which, party. Which is actually Back to the Future rules where things happen gradually. It's, it's yeah. almost like a ticking time bomb where yeah. the, the longer he stays, the longer it's more likely that things are changing. So therefore, things are gradually kind of, mm. you know. Or the photograph, that's the one you always go back to in Back to the Future. So, uh, interesting ideas. But I like this because this was like two characters debating how it works. Because, you know, G is saying, oh, no, because it's... Because it's not changed, we definitely succeed. But he said, no, no, things are still, you know, variable, things are still flexible, it's just not set in stone yet, and it's just kind of back and forth, which leads to a debate about a higher power, because she's like, oh, I had visions, and which, but I also laughed at Mason be like, what are we talking about? Visions? <laughs> so, so it's okay, Mason. Just... Uh, no, just like, Never mind, whatever, I just keep talking <laughs> next to him. And he's just standing there like, visions, I'm hearing visions, what's going on? Um, but... So yeah, and, uh, you know, and uh, again, I, I like this scene because she's like, yeah, well, maybe there is a higher power. But I, I, as someone who is an atheist, Rufus's response to all this also really like hit home because he's like, oh, my mum used to pray every night, and she's like, oh, when something good happened, thank God. When something didn't good, you know, something bad happened, uh, oh, got a plan, mysterious plan, mysterious ways. 
and you know she still is pretty oh you know take take her family out of this crappy neighborhood and he's like god didn't do that i did that i'm taking that credit um and you know that, that's elena thinking that i you know and, and of course her, you know, his his mother's counter argument would be yeah god worked through you yeah i just i liked i liked rufus's viewpoint on this and then I, I, but i like the idea that this debate is like she she's looking at it as oh it's higher power destiny. But the entire time she was saying this, I was thinking no 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 it's not higher power because I'm not I'm not seeing her visions as these you know like higher you know sending from above like prophetic visions. I'm seeing it as science anomalies where she's seeing timelines that have not, you know that are going yeah. to happen because technically the visions she's seeing are stuff that happened in the past but they've just not happened in the past yet. Does that make sense? It's almost like she's seeing the changes before they happen. It is, yes. So, no, it's interesting. I, I like the debate. But whatever side you come down on. I mean, obviously, I, I say more with Rufus just for my own... No, I agree. View, I, I, I personally say with Rufus, but the, the way the argument is left open is, well, sure, there could be a higher power giving her could, these visions. Yeah, be. Just because they're things that are, you know, we're saying, oh, it's scientific it's side effects. Sure, but... Her argument, or you know, you know, specifically Rufus's mother argument of, yeah, but God's the one who caused those side effects. Well, you, you can't really argue with that. You can't. You, 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 you. There's no way to scientifically disprove there isn't some sort of higher power. Right, <laughs> that, exactly. That's the so problem. I mean, if you want to believe that, sure. Sure. Um. And at the risk of starting to alienate anyone who watches this who is <laughs> religious, I will end this conversation now because it's so tempting to start poking holes and making fun. But uh, so uh, we we so we had that. That was very interesting. Uh, obviously, that's again a theme we're clearly running with is these visions and what we're going to do with them going forward. Because they bring up the last episode, really. Like, oh yeah, but you know the guy died, but only once. You know, it's like, it was self fulfilling prophecy. Again, they're having basically the debate that we had last week. When we're yeah, talking about and it. she she shows us, you know, but is it self fulfilling or is it just a prophecy? Yeah, and again, you can't argue with that because you, you can't. Cause you don't you you don't know because there's no control group. Hmm. So. That's interesting, and then of course the other sort of uh, arguably minor thing, it, it actually felt very random when it happened at first uh, like Christopher gets taken out of her car like someone like just comes in and drugs her. Yeah. Uh, it makes more sense in a minute though because it's, it's actually uh, uh, Lucy's mother who's like grabbed her, grabbed her and... Carol, I believe her name was. Carol. I, th- I think I finally caught it and remembered. That is Carol, I'm looking at it now in the, the I think, yeah, IMDb. Th- that is the first time I've remembered her name. Yeah. So, and she's basically, hey, I care about my daughter. Stop sending her on missions because Rittenhouse want to kill her if they see her. And she's like, eh, you know, you can't really tell your kids what to do, especially when they're, you know, in their thirties. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, she didn't say that, but that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she gives she, the whole story about what she did with her kids. Uh, yeah, after a school shooting, which had nothing to do with her her kids, but she obviously in law enforcement, she was dealing with it, and it terrified her, so she took her kids out of school, and her kids basically eventually like hated her so much for doing it and making them feel weird and, and alienated and different that she gave in, because that's really ultimately, you know, I don't want to say it's not her choice, because they are still kids and she's still a parent, and they're a parent, but it's... I think it's more you can't let the fear rule yeah. your life. You can't oh. let that get to it. You, you've got to, okay, sure, take precautions, but don't completely change everything. Yeah, just around yeah. The, thing, it, the, the, the what if. The whole idea that the kids have to, not that they should have to survive through school shootings, obviously, but the, the idea that they have to, you know, live through these things themselves and, like. Yeah, you know, keep their sense of normalcy. Yeah, like, like, go to school, even though it maybe is a little bit scarier than it should be, but still have to sort of live with that fear because that, that, that builds them to be stronger and more independent. Yeah. Right. I'm sure some child psychologists can phrase this way better than I am. But Yeah, you, you always sounded a bit ropey. <laughs> Look, I know what I'm saying. The point, the point Christopher was making is the point I'm making, right? But anyway, so they eventually let her go after some, some light torture. And uh, Mason like finds her, and it's basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got family to lose too, you know. We'll we'll, we'll come after your kids if you if you don't stop sending Lucy out. And when she says this to Lucy, Lucy's like, "Screw that! I'm still going out. Like I'm, I'm not going to not do anything." And Christopher's just kind of proud of her, and it's like, okay, <laughs> yeah. that all worked. Yeah. Again, Lucy getting points. Yeah. <laughs> Christopher, Chris- Chris- Christopher's the new mum. Christopher getting a, f- a few points herself. Yeah, yeah, it's funny how Christopher's older, yet somehow has kids that are way younger than. 
anyone yeah. else on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, how old are our kids? Do, do, do we do we know? Well, we saw the daughter come out. She was like, I don't know, yeah, ten maybe twelve tops. That's, that's about right. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, you have kids it's, when you're it's older. It's perfectly plausible. Yeah. I, I, I was just, you know, it's just it's uh, funny because uh, when she was talking to to my Queen, I, f- I felt like, oh, they're, they're in a similar age group where. Like, and I know, I know. She said, "Oh, I had Lucy when I was young," but still, I mean, there's still a big gap between. No, no, there is. Yeah. Uh, you know, her kids who are in like middle high, you know, and then. Mm. No, you know, I'm Lucy, you. who's got 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 like a PhD. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and around work, saving the world and working full time. Uh, but regardless, um, so no, oh, that's a good. That's my, probably my favorite of the season, actually. Okay. I, th- I think it broke the formula. It did a lot of interesting things. It was funny in places. It raised some interesting questions. It, it did all these things. It, you know. Yeah, I can't, I can't argue with any of that. And e- even the the filmmaking, like I said, when it was treating Kennedy's sort of reaction to te- technology as, a, as like a horror movie, where it was all these big Dutch angles, close-ups and stuff, as he was like yeah. being overwhelmed. I liked all that stuff. And that's true. And of course, we've got to talk about the ending with him, where, when, they, when they send him back. Oh, of course, uh, yes. Just to go back again to the idea that Again, the argument we had last week with the guy who got trampled with the the horse carriage is that no matter what happened, because he because you know, he says don't go to Dallas, you know, in nineteen sixty three, this date, eleven twenty two sixty three. I only know that because of the TV show. <laughs> That's why I remember that date. Um, but he said, you know, don't go, don't go to Dallas, right? You know, whatever you do, don't go, don't go there on that date. And we find out that he died around that time anyway, but in in Austin. Yeah, I think it's the same day. Maybe the same day. I, 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 I couldn't remember, which is why I just said around the same time, but fair enough, yeah. the same day. No matter what, he was destined to die that day. Um, and this idea of, is it destiny? Is there some sort of weird universe course correction where no matter what is happening? I, I think it's interesting because it stops the previous prophecy. You know, we said, oh, it's very self-fulfilling. Mm. This one isn't. It's it's in the same way. This is prophecy in the sense that from his perspective, right? It's like this is going to happen. So he goes somewhere else, you know, because he has this knowledge now. Yeah. So it's it's like he's had a vision from Gia, essentially. Yeah, and but we we know that in a different city he was going to die anyway. So yeah. you know it, it adds this murkiness to it. But you know, whereas before Rufus kind of enacted the thing that led to the death, where here he was actively avoiding it completely. Right, right, but he, that that's the thing. It begs the question: even if Rufus hadn't, you know, enacted the the the, the guy last episode. Would he have found a way to confront them no matter what? Would would events? But have not necessarily transpired? though, because here's the thing with Kennedy, he was targeted for a reason. He he didn't just die because he went to Dallas that day. Like no. they picked they they picked that spot because that's where he was going to be. No, no, of course. <laughs> so but, I mean, no, I, I'm just saying. Yeah. Begs the question: of, Okay, that changes, but he still dies. And last episode we were saw, okay, the circumstance changed, but the end result was the same. If Gia had never told Rufus about it and he never questioned him in the first place, but she'd still had that vision, was it self fulfilling or not? Would it have always come true in some way? Would Rufus, if if he hadn't gone and targeted him at the start, would they have bumped him to him for another reason? Would the investigation have led to him somehow, and the same result would have happened? That's the point of the question. It is. It is. But I, I think this <laughs> one, you know, the fact that this happens to Kennedy leans me more towards that side slightly just because okay that was you know that, that's the way that happened there so it, it, it inclines me slightly more in that direction like i say i think the Kennedy ones is is interesting because we can clearly say why it still happened because the yeah. reason why he died was not because he was in dallas that I wasn't know. actually the reason why he died that was just happened to be the location I, I, i'm just thinking in terms of other visions as well though, like because that that one was obviously the big one that we had last episode but you know, Gia had the, the vision of you know Rufus's arm, mm-hmm. and she never told him about that, and it still came true. So that it, wasn't self fulfilling in any way. What? Oh well, yeah, it did. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure what you're arguing here. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, do her visions come true? We got like Rufus's whole thing is don't tell me. Because it's you know it's because oh sure yeah t- no we we know they come true regardless yeah yeah, yeah. We, we know so, that yeah I, I I wasn't sure what you were debating there right right so I'm saying you know, Rufus's whole point of you, you telling me is what makes it come true right H- him trying not to oh yeah we know that's incorrect yeah but I, I I'm just I mean because no one else has brought this up you know Gia hasn't gone hey your arm so 
you know, they're, they're oh, not. She's just not thought of that that argument. She's she's overwhelmed. Poor girl. Um, but no, yeah, we, yeah, we we know because we already seen the arm thing, and yeah. we don't know what about the bridge. The bridge thing's weird. Like we don't know what the context of that is. But I mean, it may never be explained because it was just like a tease, yeah, a tease of what was to come. But um, no, clearly, because uh, Rufus's whole self fulfilling thing is him trying to explain it away. It's never even been a doubt in my mind that it's not. It's, that's not what it is. It's not self fulfilling. No. But that doesn't necessarily mean to say that the vision last episode wasn't always going to go down the way it did, where she told him and he was going to enact it, which led to the thing happening. That, that that to me is like, no, no, she was always going to tell him and he was always going to confront this guy first and it was always going to lead to his death. The the one difference being when Rufus tries to avoid it by just not shooting them. Which yeah, yeah I think that's instantly. the thing for me, though. The fact that it changes means that it doesn't ha- it didn't have to always be that way because if if she hadn't told him about the vision she would have shot him right that's the point but does it but matter it be- though well I, I don't know if it was always going to happen anyway does it actually matter because we're saying it's not self fulfilling therefore it doesn't actually matter if that was how it was always going to lead to it anyway no, cuz right now they don't have any impact they've only changed they've changed small things don't get me wrong like we, we've already seen you know a couple of times this season where okay no things are actually changed permanently in in history i mean my my guess right now would be that maybe this is ultimately how rittenhouse fail because they can't change what they want to change yeah yeah that's something like, like, unless they say, say they try to save someone who was supposed to die because they were going to be better for them in some way but they'll still find a way to die yeah and it'll just, it'll completely, you know, like, fate will almost intervene and stop them from succeeding. Yeah. Which is kind of weird, because it ultimately means that our heroes don't really have to do much. But, you know, I can see it playing in some interesting way, if that's how we go with it. Mm. No, I'm with you. And there's also the idea of tragedy, and the idea that... But it does beg the question, though, okay, but some people have came back. Like Jessica did die, and then didn't. So... Yeah. It's not always set in stone, clearly. It's not. It seems to be certain events. Because, you know, like you like say, we've seen things where... Well, but here's the, th- here, here's the thing, though. Before we even go down this rabbit hole, this only applies to Gia's visions, though. This does not apply to Kennedy. Because Kennedy was not a vision. Kennedy, as we yeah. said, we can explain how he died anyway and why yes. it still happened no matter what. The only thing this prophecy thing applies to is when Gia sees it. That's which is fair. why it doesn't apply to Jessica, doesn't apply to anything else that's been you know saved so, or brought so what back. We need- is we need Gia to have a vision about Rittenhouse's plan. Basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's not like some things are just set in stone. It's only set in stone once she sees it in a vision, because then it's it, 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 she's seen it because it's going to happen. Yeah. Which I think is actually a really interesting thing to look at, because you know, we're at, so much of in this world is in flux, right? You know, like, mm. So much has changed. But if she sees it, that's it. It's unchangeable. Again, that goes back to my theory that she's only seeing it because it's already happened in the past, but it's not yet because of time travel, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, she's, like, again, going back to the idea that she's seen the changes from the past before they've went back and changed them. Mm. So so she's getting a preview in that sense. And that's why it's kind of set in stone in a weird way where it can't be altered too much. Yeah, because, I mean... I can't remember if season one addressed it directly, but can we go back to the same place twice? Can we have two of the, the time ships, like the same time ship yeah, in one Yeah, we've point? not done that yet, and that would be full on Back to the Future Part 2, and it wouldn't surprise me if we go down that path at some point Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't think they've mentioned any rules forbidding it, but you know, obviously some, some versions of time travel will outright just say it doesn't work. Yeah, they'll say, oh, the universe will implode if you... <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, it, just, it won't let... You know, they, um, they, some things do that, that's fine. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I could see he's going back to a season one episode where they're running around avoiding themselves. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I mean. I'm thinking, you know, yeah. something like that. But if G has had a vision as well, and so you've got the, the double, you know, set of characters plus the vision to try and avoid. Yeah, but who was the vision about, though, if there's two sets of them? I know, that's what will make it really interesting. I think that's why <laughs> that's the episode that it happens in with a vision. Anyway, that that, that is this week's timeless. We went a good solid extra ten minutes there, just theorising uh, about time travel, wonky nonsense. The sign of a good show, though. Uh, 
So, yeah, let us know what you thought of this week's episode in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fudge for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash mailfuzztv. And you can do that over there. But otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla? <laughs>